Hello and welcome to the twelfth episode of Fresh Off the Reel. My name is Lib. Uh, my name is Spider Man Three Part Two, Frame Five Thousand Nine Hundred Seventy Three out of Twenty Thousand Seventy Seven. If you know, you know. What frame? What is that? You'll have to find out later. All right, I'll find out while I'm editing. <laughs> Today we are going to be uh, talking about a Christmas movie because by the time this comes out, it should be a couple days after Christmas. So what better way to celebrate Christmas than by watching, at least for me, my favorite Christmas movie, which is Elf, a 2003 film directed by John Favreau. John Favreau did this. The guy from Spider-Man and nothing else, right? The guy behind Iron Man 1 and 2, uh, the Lion King live action remake, which admittedly was only okay. Chef, a really good movie. That also has Sofia Vergara in it. Didn't know very good and Sofia Vergara could be in the same sense at the same time. <laughs> Funny joke. But m- for me, the big one is he directed The Mandalorian. How dare you slander uh, Sofia Vergara? You take that back. He sounds. I'm, gonna, I'm going to take a quote uh, from one of those Jimmy Kimmel read, reading mean tweets videos. Sofia Vergara... Sounds like she always has a dick in her mouth. <laughs> I don't disagree, but I'm currently I'm currently watching Modern Family, and I will not tolerate the slander. Okay, but Modern Family's fine. Okay, well, early seasons. I'm actually not like super enjoying it, so I don't even know if I can say that. <laughs> I, I'm at, I'm at that hate watch era with TV shows where I'm watching things out of spite, not and not because I want to. <laughs> like what? Like like Modern Family. Oh, well, what else? That's it. That's it. Oh, and Seinfeld. Oh. <laughs> I'm watching it because everybody will shut up about them, and and I don't want to watch them, but out of spite, I'm watching them. Oh my god, that that I need to watch uh, Seinfeld. I haven't. I I've seen a couple episodes, but never the whole show. I I watched like the first couple episodes of the, the first season. It's pretty. It's pretty alright. I, I don't know where, like, one of the best sitcoms ever shit comes from. Like, maybe it'll get better, but it's fun. I don't know. It's pretty funny. I've seen it on TV. But you know what's also pretty funny? Elf. So let's talk, let's talk about Elf. Yes. You, you, did you hear that quotation question mark when I said Elf is pretty funny? Yeah, because uh, we have different opinions on the, the lead star, Will Ferrell. <laughs> so, uh, let's... I, I love- you you went on this long tangent about John Favreau, who d- directed and then was in like two minutes of the movie, but you failed to mention Will Ferrell at all up until now. No, it's it's okay. We'll t- we'll we'll get to Will Ferrell when we get to Will Ferrell. But first, we're going to read the plot synopsis like we always do. Uh, this one's coming off of Google. So here we go. This holiday, discover your inner elf. Yeah, that's the tagline. When young Buddy falls into Santa's gift sack on Christmas Eve, he's transported back to the North Pole and raised as a toy-making elf by Santa's helpers. But as he grows into adulthood, he can't shake the nagging feeling that he doesn't belong. Buddy vows to meet, visit Manhattan and meet his real dad, a workaholic publisher. Is that the end? That's the end. Yeah, of that's the it. That's it. It doesn't even mention Zoe Deschanel. It doesn't mention Zoe Deschanel. By, it doesn't by mention full the... name, not not her character, <laughs> the actress by full <laughs> name. It it also doesn't mention at all. Um, what's what's his what, what's his name? The kid. It doesn't mention anything after the first ten minutes of the movie. Like, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. that's an accurate description of the first ten minutes of the movie. Uh, spe- speaking that's... of the of the kid, he's only in like one other movie, Dougal. <laughs> hey, really? What? I feel like I've seen Daniel Trey before, though. Like, other things. Maybe TV. But I'm looking on Letterboxd. Unless you've you know, seen American Splendor, Dougal, or Beer League. I have not seen any of these those things. I don't know why he looks so familiar. That's weird. That's going to bother me now. Yeah, me too. It kind of looks familiar. But anyways, let's talk cinema. Uh, what, what did you uh, rate it? Uh, I gave this lovely movie that I definitely enjoyed. That I'm not saying this sarcastically. A a three out of five. Uh, I thought it was fine. I I, I saw so I saw this as a kid. Uh, this Have wasn't my all. first time. Yeah, everyone has. Literally everybody has. Um, so it wasn't my first time watching it, but it was my first time in I, I want to say like at least ten fifteen years that I've seen it. 
A little known fact about me, I don't like Will Ferrell. I don't think he's funny in anything. <laughs> like, uh, I'll, I'll give Anchorman a pass. But I don't think it's because he's funny. I think it's because Steve Carell is funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't find him funny, and this movie does nothing to change that for me. I don't think the rest of the cast does particularly well either. Like, Ed Asner is fun as Santa. I like when he pulled out a knife and said, Hi, I'm Ed Asner. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, none of the cats are least. Maybe I should lower my score now that I'm talking about it out loud. <laughs> like, I don't know, this movie does, like, nothing for me. It, it's a pretty, like, run-of-the-mill Christmas story. It's a pretty run-of-the-mill fish-out-of-water story, which is a common trope in, in Christmas movies for whatever reason. Uh, I guess it kind of, like, I, I get it, but it's just weird. Didn't find it particularly funny that the, 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 uh, the songs are good. It has a good soundtrack. It's about, like, the one... Absolute positive, I could say. It's got good music. John Deb Debney. John Debney. He also did the soundtrack for Iron Man Two, The Kronk's New Groove, and Sin City. Uh, just to name a few. Sin, Sin City is good. Sin City's also got good music. Kronk's New Groove has really good music. I mean, not Kronk. I, was, I meant Kronk. I meant the Emperor's New Groove. Don't mind. Like, he also did the Kronk's. He also did Kronk's New Groove. But besides the point, he also did the soundtrack for the Jimmy Neutron movie. That's another funny one just to mention. Uh, but I think the big one, the big one, is he did the soundtrack for The Greatest Showman, which is one of good movie. One of the best movies I've seen, I think. Uh, it's it's, yeah. it's really, really good. Really good composer. Really good soundtrack. Like, when, when, I, I, when I watched this, when I rewatched this again, this was maybe the first time in a few years that I've seen it. It's not like Monster House where I watch it every year. This is another one of those lip nostalgia movies, by the way. Yeah, this and this is one of those um, Pat's an old man who hates having fun movies. <laughs> the, <laughs> like Monster House. <laughs> well, I, we promise we'll do a Pat nostalgia movie soon. We'll do a Pat nostalgia movie and Lib's gonna hate it. We'll do Grease. Out of, <laughs> out of spite, we'll do Grease and Lib will hate it. <laughs> I really don't like you Grease. Already- you won't even watch it. It's like, I hate this. <laughs> I, I, I watched Grease five times this week and I've watched it zero. <laughs> and the whole episode will be me singing the songs. Oh my god. Don't even put me through that torture. Or else I'm gonna sing all the songs from... Uh, what, 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 what's that? What's that? Uh, what's that movie where the scientist turns all the kids into fish? I don't know what you're talking about. Is it called Fishtail? I feel like it is, but it's like tail with an eye. Fuck, I don't we remember. It's an animated we movie. We mentioned Will Ferrell, and then we got distracted again. Oh, yeah. the the, the... I'm talking about Help of yeah. a Fish. I'm talking about that movie. It's weird. It's a very weird movie. Or maybe we'll talk about it after we do my nostalgic movie, which will not be Grease, I promise. Oh no, we're not doing help him a fish. It'll be the it'll be the Breakfast Club, another movie. Lim doesn't like. Oh my god, <laughs> some people are gonna kill me for not liking though. I'm just gonna recommend you '80s and '90s movies until you like one. That's uh, the plan. <laughs> you better you better wait until the uh, the backlog segment. Stay tuned for that, guys, because I'm gonna force Pat Honestly, to watch something. <laughs> I'm gonna be a real upfront. <laughs> I'm more excited to talk about the backlog segment than I have to talk about Elf. Same. <laughs> but this is the Elf episode, so we must go out talk about Elf. So, yeah. Will Ferrell. I I also don't think he's super funny. When I was a kid, I thought he was really funny. I love him in Megamind. Uh, and Anchorman and Step Brothers. That's pretty much it. Everything else is kind of just there. Like... Daddy's Home is not that good. That Bewitched remake was actual garbage. Uh, what else was he in? Wedding Crashers? Well, was he in Wedding Crashers? I can, every I can com- every comedian about, was in Wedding Crashers. I couldn't really forget about Step Brothers. Um, I like him in Step Brothers. I think that, that that's that's a good one. I think we we have we we're obliged to mention Step Brothers because we ripped off their <laughs> their poster. Yeah. And he's he's not in he's not in Wedding Crashers. He's not okay. Uh, You're thinking about Vince Vaughn, who looks like a serious version of him. <laughs> Am I just thinking of Vince Vaughn? Probably. V- Vince Vaughn and um, Will Ferrell look kind of similar. I guess so. But uh, Vince Vaughn looks like a more serious version of him. And and he's also in. Like, I mean, we gotta say this because it's one of the like best, 
like the one of the, one of the best selling movies of all time, the Lego Movie. He's it. He's Lord Business in the Lego Movie, and he's also the kid's dad, right? Worst. I mean, I don't like Lord Business very much in Lego Movie either. It's just, it's just Will Ferrell kind of just waters down a lot of roles when i was a kid i thought he was like yeah will ferrell will ferrell's in a movie the movie's gonna be funny but now i'm like well, oh I will think, ferrell's in a movie <laughs> i think a lot of kids or like younger people like will ferrell because that's he plays just nine children and everything he's especially in elf yeah and, and i think like that, that's just what he likes to do like he's definitely like a typecasted actor but he, he, he's just something he enjoys that's just his style you know Nothing against Will Ferrell it, as a person. Like I've seen him in interviews, yeah. he seems like a pretty chill dude. Yeah, it's just not a ignore that sound. It's just not a style I like. And as I get older, it gets a little more difficult for me to to stomach. Yeah, but like he's not a he's fine. Like he's I still find him super funny. And I think here is an extreme of him playing the child, like the man child character. You know, the thing is with Elf, it's hard to picture anyone else in the role. The only other person I could think of is another typecasted man-child actor, um, like Adam Sandler. Like no, but like for this character, Will Ferrell works. I just don't like it. But like he he plays the the role that like properly. That's how Buddy is written to be. Yeah. Also, I didn't mention. Um. Um. I gave it four stars. I forgot to mention that I gave it four stars. One star was because of nostalgia reasons. Yeah, one whole star I lowered, for nostalgia. I I lowered my score from a three to a two and a half. Whoa, well, let's smack down the middle. I think I, I think there's definitely like things to enjoy. It's not a bad movie. It's definitely not a bad Christmas movie, and like everyone has that nostalgic attachment towards it because quite literally, I think everybody has seen this movie at least once. I'd say this is child approved. So any any parents out there, they they need they need to put on a movie so that they don't have to watch their kids for about an hour. Go ahead and put on Elf for the Christmas season because this okay. movie is going to... They're going to laugh their asses off and but get ready because they're going to quote this movie every day for the rest of your life. Yep. <laughs> and and if you do that, you might relate to the dad character in this movie uh, played by James Cain. <laughs> <laughs> so... But let's let's go let's go uh, to James James Kane or James James Khan. How do you say that? It might be Khan. It's two A's, so it might be James Khan. Um, he is in uh The Godfather Part One and Two. Really good in The Godfather, <laughs> might I add. Yeah, but uh... he's, he's he plays um Santino. He plays Santino. Yeah, he's weird in this movie. You yeah, you they, could they kind of, but but he is. So he's the he's the, the the villain in quotation marks. He's the antagonist, I guess. Yeah, he's he's Buddy's biological father, and and, and you're 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 supposed to not like him because he's a uh, in all business. He's on the no naughty fun. list. Yeah, he's on the naughty list. He's all business, no time for his family, neglectful neglectful dad. And he and he, you know like he he's not a good person. Like let's just sort out there. He's he is a bad dad. Yeah, both to his his original son and his new son. But he's a weird villain. Because I think, to a degree, his his actions in this movie are are kind of understandable. <laughs> yeah, like it, I I could understand the whole thing of if like he's worried about his job, and if he does, if if he gets one thing wrong, he's gonna get fired. And people are people in the movie are like, especially his son Michael, pegging him to be the bad guy because of it. But this this guy is just straight up scared for his job, <laughs> scared about losing his job, a, like. Like he is neglectful. Like he is. Like he wasn't around for. for yeah, Michael no, no, he he and wasn't. His, his wife mentions it, and like we're not like he's he he is a bad father. Yeah, but like especially with like the shit Buddy pulls in this movie, I think his actions are kind of sort of justified. Like yeah, he, he has a he has a decent enough reason to be pissed <laughs> not at Buddy anyway. His performance is very bad as well like he yeah he, like he, yeah, I, that's what i was gonna say too i agree yeah <laughs> he it's, really it's very he really half-assed this role yeah it's very phoned in he's very stiff very kind of like awkward to watch it, it feels, which i could say about a, a lot of performances but because he's one of the main characters it's really noticeable with him it, it feels weird because it, it feels like because he's playing the man baby will ferrell is the only one that has a lot of energy in this movie and like he's he's the one giving it his all i guess and every other actor and actress is just half-assing it especially zoe deschanel 
Oh, okay, I was about to mention it, yeah. Like, I, I think the worst defender is Zoe Deschanel. She's, like, such a talented actress, and in this movie, she just doesn't care. So, my favorite, uh, my favorite movie of hers is uh, Almost Famous. It's really good. She's also in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, another really good movie. She's, she's fantastic in those movies, and, and like, Zoe Deschanel is just one of those actresses where, like, if she's in a movie, she's, prob- she's pretty much gonna nail that role. Yeah, I really like her in um it's a show, not a movie, but New Girl was was really fun. Yeah, New New Girl was really funny. But she 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 has like the 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 chops to be a, a funny a funny character. And and I think they they tried here to to make her kind of funny to bounce off of Buddy. It doesn't really work. Her performance is really stiff. She she has like the same tone of voice of the entire movie, including when she's supposed to be singing. Like yeah, she's, she, she's supposed to be good at singing in this movie, yeah, and, and she she is like actually a, a good like Zoe Deschanel is actually a good a decent singer. It, it's such a phoned in role, and I it it's a shame because she's such a talented actress and she just did not care. It was not fun to watch her here. No, it really wasn't. She was very boring. She was very one tone monotone the entire movie. Barely showed any emotion. Gonna, I thought she was going to be in it more. Like she's really not in much of the movie. Yeah. She has this weird, weird side plot, like romantic side plot with, with Buddy, that is really weird and awkward, and I don't understand how either of them fell for the other. And they had a ba- but, they have a baby together in the end. Yeah, like we I, I watched this with Lib yesterday. Like we watched it together. Yeah. And at the beginning of the movie, uh, I pointed out like I rem- I remembered like wasn't there a like a romantic subplot in this movie? And he's like, yeah, with Zoe Deschanel. I'm like, oh, wait, what? And so then we get there, and it, it's, it feels so awkward and forced. Like, it's, it, it, it's not natural at all. I, I I mean, you, get, like, you get to the ending with the baby. Like, how? Like, how, how, <laughs> do, how do we reach this point? Like, how and why? Yeah, it didn't need this movie. Did how, not how, need it, 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 yeah, it really, it didn't need one either. What, what's Zoe Deschanel's character? What's her name? Jovi. Jovi. it was Nicole, but then I remembered Nicole is... is the the <laughs> the love interest in the inner whiplash. That's whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because we were we were watching whiplash, and I I never called her by her name. I called her Supergirl the entire time. <laughs> well, and, and I and then I remember talking about a completely unrelated movie. <laughs> I remember her name is Nicole. <laughs> so, Jovi ends up falling in love with with Buddy. At complete random, like they barely had any screen time together in the first place. It's 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 just a really weird role. It's a love at first sight thing. I mean, it's really like awkward. But then you have someone who I think was overacting a bit, which was the the mom character at Emily. What's her name? Mary Steenburgen. I felt she overacted a bit. She played a very convincing, supportive mother, which this movie didn't need. <laughs> this movie is filled with characters. That are like Christmas movie tropes, like the the neglective father, the the supportive mother, the little shit kid, like like it's full of just generic movie tro- like Christmas movie tropes. But then it shoves in this fish out of water story, and I feel like they really should have picked one because it, and and you could definitely do it in a way that makes sense. But this movie doesn't do that. It, it's... Like if it, it, it feels like I'm watching Home Alone, and then like the Santa Claus. And then Wonder Woman in the same movie, <laughs> and those movies, those movies shouldn't mesh, and they don't. It, it's but here we are. It's such a weird movie when you like break it down like this. But if you just if you just turn your brain off and just watch it, you'll actually get a lot of enjoyment out of it. I th- I find. I I think in the moment it's a fun movie, but like most Christmas movies from this era, they're like fun. Just put it on and turn your brain off and just enjoy the the Christmas spirit. Yeah, like Ed Ed Asner as Santa, such that such a good she, he did such a good job. Like I yeah, he's great. Sa- Santa's the best character in this movie. Yeah, I really like um Bob Newhart as Papa Elf too. Yeah, um, he he was really he was really convincing as well. Yeah. He's the narrator and he's also he's Papa Elf. He's not in this movie much either, but I think he's really fun. But like those are the only two characters I could think of that are like at all of note. Everyone else like gives either super phoned in performances. Or they're Will Ferrell, and I thought the kid <laughs> was okay. Like, well, he's a he's a kid actor from like the two thousands, so he's he's like there's nothing to write home about, you know. 
I, I like his dynamic with Buddy. Like, I like that he, he, he finds him weird and creepy at first, like any normal person would. And then they have their, like, snowball fight, and it's cute, and they bond. And in the end, the kid, the kid, like, caring about Buddy is what brings the family together, I guess, in the end, you know? Yeah. But, like, I don't know. He, he doesn't really do much for me. He's just, like, a snot-nosed brat that's in all these Christmas movies. <laughs> So the 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 big the plot here is so but Buddy's a human he's not a, he's not an elf he, when he was a baby he went into like they, Santa went to an orphanage and he Buddy as a baby his real name's not Buddy either we never find out what his real name is they just call him Buddy Wait, because his diapers say little Buddy well his name he was never given a name right like he was given up as a oh baby. right right he was giving up given up right yeah. at birth. Yeah, and then, like, presumably whoever adopted him would have named him, but he never got adopted because Santa kidnapped him. Yeah, Santa fucking kidnapped him. He walked into the sack, Santa brought him back to the North Pole, and then he was just raised as an elf. So he's just a human, but with elf powers? <laughs> well, one one thing I like is they 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 don't try to, like, be, like hide how stupid this concept is. Like what, what? It's revealed to Buddy that he's human. Like within the first like five ten minutes of the movie, it's really early, and all the characters are like, well, you probably noticed already because you're six two. Like, that was a joke, I think, in the movie. Like, yeah, of course you're not an elf. You're six two. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, <laughs> um, it was the the snowman Leon. He was like, well, of course you're not an elf. You're six two, and you've had a beer since you were fifteen. <laughs> yeah, it's like at least they 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 know it's dumb and like just laugh at it, you know. Because it's not a thing for long. The fact that he was raised by elves isn't a huge factor yeah, but to the story anyway. It, it just justifies his behavior in it. But yeah, it doesn't he, really he still has, like, he still acts like an elf. Like, uh, he, he's a master tinker, like all the other elves. He's really good at making things slowly, but he's good at making them. He's He's amazing at snowball fights. There's this one scene where they play it off like a war scene. It's really funny. <laughs> and And they make this joke where... Like someone's at someone asked Buddy, like, did you get did you sleep well last night? He's like, yeah, I got a full forty minutes. <laughs> it's it's just, and also the you know, elves live for like six hundred years. Uh, Papa Elf is apparently over five hundred years old, and you know, yeah, they make a joke about it later. Like, yeah, my dad's four hundred ninety, and he's still working. You know, no, oh, yeah, my dad didn't make Master Tinker until he was four hundred ninety. I know every line from this movie. Oh my god! <laughs> That's good because I don't. I've got uh, not one of them right so far. <laughs> and of course, Elf uh, it, Buddy follows the four main food groups for elves: candy, candy cane, candy corn, and syrup. So this man's probably has diabetes since he was like five. Yeah, this man not being dead is 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 a shock. <laughs> Like, he never sleeps. He runs entirely on sugar <laughs> that he eats extreme amounts of. The fact that he's alive at all is amazing. He's literally built different. <laughs> literally. But the fact that he's not, like, fat is amazing, too. I don't know. This may maybe it's all the singing and dancing that elves do at, at, yeah, at Santa's workshop. True, true. They do. They if he only sleeps for a good forty minutes, that means he he's working like twenty three hours a day. So I I like know, that. He, I, one of my favorite things about this movie at the beginning, they like establish elf lore that like elves can only be three things: they can work at Santa's workshop, you can make cookies in a hollowed out tree, or you can make shoes for the cobbler while he's sleeping. <laughs> it's just like it's it, it's, it's, it's funny. It's it's just fun details because they like. The elves don't come up again, but it's it's cute that they're building up the world, you know. John Favreau, as weird as this movie is, John Favreau is an excellent director, hey, and he knows his stuff. I prefer him behind the camera than in front of it, personally. Well, uh, he he, really he well. always cameos in his movies. Yeah, yeah, but I love him in Chef, if if nothing else. I still I need to watch Chef. Maybe I'll recommend you Chef next week. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, speaking of John Favreau cameos, he cameos as the Doctor. Uh, yeah. At one point, uh, they go to a doctor to do a blood test to see if Buddy is actually Walter's son. Walter's the dad. We didn't say that before. Uh, James Conn. We said James Conn. We didn't say the, the character's name. And yeah, he's the doctor. He's just yeah. He's just there. He doesn't have like yeah, yeah. that many lines. Yeah, he's he's not in that much. He he yeah. has like a cute moment with Walter. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. He explains why why um. 
but he is the way that he is, kind of. Uh, and they they move on. So a weird um, I'm gonna call it a celebrity casting because they they had to pay the big bucks to get Peter Peter Dinklage in this movie. Because how the fuck did they get Peter Dinklage in this movie? <laughs> well, we're, we're talking about Peter Dinklage and like I mean it is still post Lord of the Rings, but um, it's still 2006 Peter Dinklage. So like. Yeah, it, it's I, I, it's I, I, post I, it's post Lord of the Rings pre Narnia, so yeah, he's not. So I think I he definitely would have been an expensive cameo, but like he he was at least on the same tier, maybe maybe a bit more famous than Will Ferrell at the time, but like he not too much more famous. I, I think I think it would have would have been too costly, you know. And they they waste his entire screen time on short jokes, pretty much. Oh, of course, but that's. The the unfortunate reality of of Peter Dinklage and, and comedies, especially stupid Will Ferrell comedies like this, is they're gonna go for a low hanging fruit and just make short jokes. It, it sucks, but I'm sh- I'm sure that's like he knew what he was setting up for when he signed on to this project, right? You're you're in the movie for a two minute cameo. It's in a Will Ferrell comedy. We're we're making we're making short yeah, we're, jokes. We're gonna make short jokes. We're gonna call you a South Pole elf. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and of course. Uh... That leads to the eventual, you know, every movie has this where the two main characters split for like five minutes and then the spirit of Christmas brings them back together. Actually, an engine falling off Santa's sleigh brings them together. Yeah, the whole scene where like once Santa lands in New York City, I love I love the rest of the movie after that. Like, I I don't know what I don't know what it is. I love that the New York Park Rangers no santa is real like like and they straight up try to kill him because every year he every time he flies over new york they try to kill him (laughs) (laughs) and and the reasoning is because he put them on the naughty list and they never forgave him that's what they say in the movie (laughs) like it's just a fun like little stupid thing like this movie's like, so fun. This movie's so fun. I love this movie. Yeah, it it has it has fun moments. Like I I just love that idea where it's like we know Santa's real. We're gonna tell nobody, and we're gonna try to kill him. <laughs> and another thing is at the same time there's this news reporter that's like, you know, obviously she's not having it. She's like, oh, Santa's real, guys. He's in Central Park right now. But what what's funny is that this she work the there's two news anchors there's her and then there's the the guy on the other end, and they're just like reporting on Santa and then he cuts in and he's like you know normally on news we talk about actual news. <laughs> yeah, they're like, they're like patronizing each other. Like it's it's, it's that's the word patronize. I think I think this movie needed like jokes like that. Like yeah, like we know this is dumb. Like like we know what we're doing. You know, yeah, like the the people making this movie knew that half of it was dumb. Like they had to, because the it, the comedy is built on the fact that we know this is a stupid movie. Yeah, they're not subtle about the fact that like they know this is dumb. Because even like these segments when they're in the North Pole, where like the the sets isn't it set or is it CG? I don't remember. What the claymation, uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer style. New York, uh, be now North Pole. It's a set, right? The, I think the the North the North Pole is is a set with a green screen sky. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a green screen sky, and like definitely the 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 ice that he like sails to New York on is definitely a set. But I I don't know if the rest of it is. What one? I I I think this is true. I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. But all the scenes that were filmed in New York were actually just straight up filmed with random people. Like kind of like Borat, I believe that. Uh, I I think so. I, I I'm pretty sure it's only the scenes where he's indoors where they hired actors. Well, yeah, I guess they they, they just took advantage of if this is, if this is true, they took advantage of the fact that New York is just a busy city. Yeah, no, no one I, I, and no I, I no one would notice Will Ferrell dressed up like this walking around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like Borat too, where everybody recognizes him in the second one. So like. There's a whole running gag in that second movie where he he's he has to be in disguise because so many people recognize him from Borat. <laughs> <laughs> the Borat's so f- we should we should do Borat the the both movies. I, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I don't know don't know what to say about Borat. I honestly like if we ever do live 
live watches. I'm down to do Morad, whatever review style. I don't know what I'd even say. <laughs> very, very nice. That's a weird. I, 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 I watched Morad the other day, and I was like dying and laughing. I'm just like I've seen it like three times already. And this, and that movie is so funny. We we're we're missing out the rest of the title. Hold on, it's it's. Borat, Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan. <laughs> I, I, I like uh, Borat, subsequent movie film. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's, pro that's probably my favorite title for anything. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. Borat, Borat subsequent Borat movie film. <laughs> Borat is just, like, Borat 2 is a lot better than I thought it was going to be in general. I expected it to be a, a cash cow... Let's revive this dead IP. And, yeah, it, it, uh, it was it was one of the it was one of the first um, Amazon originals that I remember. I think because then after uh, after that the Tomorrow War came out. Well, there, there was like Amazon original shows, but I, I don't. I can't, oh yeah, I, can't I know. Think of... I know Jack Ryan. Yeah. yeah, everyone everyone who uses YouTube knows Jack Ryan because we all got those ads shoved down our face. <laughs> You, and and if you ordered packages while Jack Ryan was uh, in in uh, production, your Amazon package had Jack Ryan on it. They really the the marketing for that for that show was top notch. Turn, it's too bad it ended up being like a solid two out of five. <laughs> yeah, I watched. I like I watched like the first season and a half the second season. I thought it was fine. Um, it's 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 nothing special, especially like in the in that genre. It's really not original at all. It's just action. But I like, yeah, yeah, I like John Kravinsky a lot, and, and yeah, hopefully we get to see him as Mister Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, please, please. Yeah, he he's perfect for Reed Richards. Like e either him, get him as Reed Richards, or um, Glenn Hall Hallert Hallerton. Glenn Hallert, who's that? Dan Dennis from It's Always Sunny. Oh, <laughs> why him? <laughs> I I I think he looks like he looks the part for Reed Richards. I don't know. I just I can see it. You know what? Now that I think about it, I can also see it. Like I, I don't know if he could do a, a serious character because like Reed, Reed is not a ser not a jokey character really, but I could definitely see him physically as Reed Richards. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, you know what? No, I still, I still want, I still want uh, Jim Halpert. <laughs> oh yeah, same. Especially now that he's like jacked, it'd be, it'd be great. But uh, we'll have to see whenever they get the casting done for that. Yep. But anyway, that's not that's not Elf. We have more movie to talk about. Yeah, we will. We have a, just a bit more movie because well, we we didn't talk about. I was trying to like get, get into there, and then I got distracted by by other things. But um, like like we were saying, this movie kind of knows what it is. Yeah. To the point that there's even like the the North Pole scenes are just parodying uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. That that one that's on TV twenty four seven. The stop motion every one. year since like the sixties. The stop motion one. Yeah. Yeah, like they they know what they're doing. It's just it's weird. It's a weird movie. The more I talk about it, the more I don't know if I like it. But it, I it's I a like fun, it. Like I, I think it's, it's good. A fun cute Christmas movie to watch with the family. I think it's good. It's just it's just worse if you watch it a lot. <laughs> if you keep if you keep it to once a year, it's good. I think it's worse if you're old enough to not have children, <laughs> but. I don't even know where I'm going with this. You're, just, you're <laughs> too old, old to enjoy this. Like I don't, I don't have kids, so I don't get that kind of enjoyment with it. And then, and then I'm not young enough to, to, to find Will Ferrell entertaining. So I'm just sad and angry. You know, it's probably just. It's, it's for me. It's just the nostalgia. If if I watched it for the first time this year. I definitely would have hated it. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely it's a nostalgic movie for a lot of people. You and the nostalgia really brings it up like to a, like another level. But like like most Christmas movies that aren't Die Hard, I think if you watch them for the first time now, they they kind of like they age out and like they're not they're not for you if you're a certain age. Christmas, and Elf just isn't for me. Christmas movies like most of them at least are just just like they're made for kids pretty much. Like, like, like I think Home Alone is a good family Christmas movie. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't think like I can't imagine being a parent watching this with my kids and enjoying it. I'll enjoy my I'll enjoy watching my kids watch it, but I don't know if I would enjoy the movie. Whereas if I put something like um, Home Alone, I, I there's enjoyment to be had for the whole family there, you know. And I don't think you get that here, at least in my opinion. 
But I like Jingle All the Way, so what do I know, honestly? My, my opinion <laughs> on Christmas movie is pretty bad. It's Elf is um the sixth highest grossing Christmas movie of all time. What's the what's the top five? Number one is the original How to Grinch Stole Christmas. No, That's I'm wrong. Right. I'm wrong. The original is the is the is I number yeah. I, if we're look if we're looking at the same list, the Grinch the animated one that yeah, came yeah, out. The, the, the illumination movie. one. Then it's home alone. That upsets me. That upsets me. That also upsets me. Then then number three is the Jim Carrey uh how to Grinch Stole Christmas. I, that also that also upsets me. Then a Christmas not Carol. Because, not because this movie's bad, but because both these movies did above the original uh, upsets me. Yeah. Then uh, A Christmas Carol, which is also Jim Carrey. Then The Polar Express, which is honestly a fine movie. Then Elf. Where's Die Hard? Where's Die Hard? Where's Die Hard? Not here. Not in the top 32. It's not here. I'm upset. Where's Die Hard? Where's Jingle All the Way? Number 14. Jingle All the Way made that. Yeah, I mean, Arnold. Where's Jingle Arthur Christmas? Arnold. There it is. Arthur. In my, I think Arthur Christmas is probably... Like, I I say like Elf is my Elf is my favorite Christmas movie, but if I'm speaking like what's the best Christmas movie, it's Arthur Christmas. I love Arthur Christmas. It, it has such a good story. It has such a twist, not a villain. You know, someone you think is the villain, but is actually never was the villain, and you were just thinking he was because you're an idiot. <laughs> I I don't know what my because I I joke I joke you say uh, Die Hard's my favorite Christmas movie. But like, if I have to think about an actual Christmas movie, I don't know what I would pick. I th- I thought you would pick Home Alone. Probably Home Alone, yeah. But like, it's a weird movie to say is your favorite Christmas movie, right? It is a Christmas movie. It is, but it's but it's not like a Christmas spirit movie, you know. Well, not, neither neither really is Arthur Christmas. Arthur Christmas is more of a comedy with a Christmas backdrop. Yeah, well, like Christmas with the Cranks, right? Same thing with right, that. right, least, yeah. But like, but like, it's about Christmas. Yeah, Home Alone just happens to take place on Christmas. Yeah, you, Home Alone could have been at any point in time, but you, yeah, you know, exactly. you know what ma- you know what makes Home Alone the best Christmas movie though? John Williams did the score. That's how you know, because John Williams got it. <laughs> I want to, I want to see a remake of Home Alone. But like Macaulay Culkin is back, but like she's just an adult. Like it's the exact same movie, but Macaulay Culkin's an adult. <laughs> I think we said this on the podcast already. <laughs> yeah, I need I I need this movie to happen. <laughs> I'm looking at the highest gross of Christmas movie list and I noticed Devil May Cry 3 aka Santa Claus 3 is on the list what? I okay okay I'm gonna send you I'm gonna send you two pictures on discord and you're gonna get your live reaction okay alright but we're really not talking about Elf I mean we're kind of uh, we're kind of done <laughs> I, I, I have, a, I have a couple more things to say well, I, I have to get this this epic baby show me can you and this this picture is too powerful for Discord apparently. Hold on. What? Okay, so, so so this is the Santa Claus three, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> Just double make fight three. You can't convince me otherwise. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, we we didn't talk at all about the end the ending scene where. New York sings Christmas carols to. to oh yeah, okay. Oh, we didn't so, talk about that whole subplot with Santa, like. Okay, so don't okay, yeah, anymore. I forgot. Okay, so the whole the thing about Santa's sleigh, and I think, in my opinion, this is the best like how Santa's sleigh works thing that any movies come up with, and a lot of movies ended up copying this, like Arthur Christmas did end up copying this, and it's that Santa's sleigh runs off of Christmas spirit, and if. Uh, if people stop believing in Santa, then his sleigh won't work anymore. And sometime in the 60s, Papa Elf had to make a jet engine to put to the back of Santa's sleigh so that it could fly without Christmas spirit because people were starting to not believe in Santa Claus. And as the years go by, people stop believing in him. But from what we learned at the very beginning of the movie, that the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. And then... Buddy tells this to Zoe Deschanel, and Zoe Deschanel has to sing in front of a whole crowd of New Yorkers to get Santa Slay to work. And he, she say, he says sing very loosely, because she, she like speak talks, basically. Or sing talks. That's the word I wanted to say. You better watch out. 
you better not cry like that. Like yeah. she's not actually singing. She's just, you know, <laughs> like, it's a cute, it's a cute scene. And like they do get Santa slay in the air and then everyone sees Santa. So they believe in him. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's weird. They don't, they don't sing very well. But they do, they do establish uh, the, cause there could have been a plot hole, but they do plug it up very quickly because they like Michael right away was like, OK, well, there's there's people reporting news out there. Let's get the cameras in here. We'll point it at you. Say you're the real Santa and everyone's going to believe in you. Santa's just then you say he's going to work. But the, the, their way to plug that hole was uh, if they know Santa's real, that doesn't count as believing. That means they know it's real. But then the Christmas spirit is gone, which is a good explanation. Then the a bunch of people see him anyway, so they know he's real. But like... Yeah, so now they know he's real. He's also on camera also. Because I'm sure like, cell phones were invented in 2003. or were flip phones, but they had cameras on them. Someone could have easily recorded it. Photoshop did exist. Yeah. Actually, I was about to say it didn't, but it did. <laughs> uh, basically, Christmas is cancelled because uh, Santa fucked up. Santa fucked up and basically told everybody that he exists. He brought the poison to him. Buddy saved Christmas and then had sex with Zoe Deschanel and they got a baby daughter named Susie. Is that her name? I didn't even notice the baby. Yeah, her name is Susie, spelled S U S I E. In, in the end, he doesn't, like, I guess he, he works things out with his dad, but like, Buddy just leaves. Yeah, he just <laughs> he goes, goes back to the North Pole. Goes back to the North Pole with Zoe Deschanel, which is like fine, I guess. I, I think, I think I mean, he said, like, th- this movie. This movie tries to be too many different Christmas movies, and it doesn't really work well. I mean that that's that that's it. Will Will Ferrell decides that being a man baby is okay, which is yeah, not. Yeah, like there's no, there's like there's no like lesson to be learned, right? Like he doesn't. He didn't really. I guess the lesson was for Walter to learn, and not for Buddy. I, I I guess I like Walter learns his lesson, but like, Buddy that's... Buddy just doesn't have an arc. Like, he just... Yeah, but, like, it, it's set up to, like, th- make you think he has an arc. Yeah, to make him maybe go full human. Either go full human or full elf. And he was yeah, like... Yeah, that, that's... that's Like, I've seen the movie, so I know the result. But, like, that's what I was expecting. Are we watching it yesterday? I was like, oh, so, like, he has to make a choice, right? But no. He, it's literally just, I have to reunite with my dad. Okay, I did that. I'm leaving now. Yeah, I met my I, dad I no and longer, I'm done. I, I did what I want, I'm done. Like, I'm leaving. It's, it's Goodbye. Weird. It's weird. Weird ending, but... Yeah, it, it, tr- it tries to be too many different Christmas tropes in one movie, and they don't, they don't mesh well. I don't think, anyway. I don't think it meshes well, either. But, again, if you just turn off your brain and watch this movie, you're not gonna care. Yeah. It's, it's a very easy watch. Uh, yeah, we that, we that, somehow that managed true. to talk about it for... A, like almost an hour, like. <laughs> so I, I I mean I have nothing else I want to say. This is just repeating things at this point. So I guess we can we can move on to um, hot off the presses. Yeah, yeah, we can move on. Like four stars from me. Before was three stars, but now two and a half awesome. from him. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this this week's hot off the presses is a, a bit of a short one, mainly because the the big thing is is things we can't talk about yet. For reasons we're gonna explain, so let's get those out of the way. So Spider-Man No Way Home has been out for about a week at the time of recording, and uh, the Matrix Resurrection came out today. I think at the time of recording. Oh wait, no something, Way Home. Something else came out today. Uh, the, the Kingsman. Oh yeah, the Kingsman. The Kingsman came out today as well. The Kingsman. Okay. So I'm not gonna talk about the Kingsman because I don't think it's relevant to what I'm about to say. Yeah. But I've been excited for both these movies for a long time, specifically No Way Home. I've been talking about it since the podcast started. Yeah. Uh, even longer in my personal life. I'm sure everyone is tired of me talking about Spider-Man, but I'm never going to stop. Please please um, stop talking about the Webbed Crusader. Yeah, well, actually, good news for you, Lynn, because I'm going to stop talking about it right now. Because, uh, <laughs> spoilers for uh, next episode. But um, we're not talking about No Way Home now because the next episode is going to be on No Way Home. So if you want to hear our thoughts yep. on that... We'll we'll be talking about that next week, and we also plan on doing an episode on the Matrix in January. I believe that's when we have that scheduled. Yeah, if, if I check the yeah. schedule, yeah. So those are those are two cu- coming episodes. One very soon. So we're not going to talk about No Way Home right now. Um, I did see it. Lib has seen what he can, and that's where we're stopping things for now. Yeah, I watched the first half. Not going to say 
why I only watched the first half. Because it's a long story. Not well not not that long. It's more of a can't. So <laughs> yeah. So look, we're we, gonna look, 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 we're a movie podcast. We all have sources, okay? <laughs> yeah. Like we're gonna move on. But I'll come back next week and then in January to hear about The Matrix and No Way Home. And then maybe one day we'll talk about The Kingsman. Probably not, though. I'll have to watch all the other ones. <laughs> uh, the, the first one's really good. The second one sucks. Would not recommend. But anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> speaking of, of Spider-Man, if you saw the movie in theaters, one of the after credit scenes is the trailer for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Which is no longer a spoiler because they released the trailer. Yeah, on I, I was about to say, yeah. you can now leave halfway through the credits because that trailer's been officially released by Marvel. <laughs> uh, what if is canon now, which is neat. Neat is, is what I would describe it as. Yeah. Um, it looks really interesting. Sam Raimi's directing. I'm very excited. That's all I have to say. If you want to hear our thoughts about what if, you can check out last episode on WandaVision where we briefly talk about it. Yeah, because uh, we... We are planning to do the Disney Plus shows, except what if. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to hear our thoughts on what if, or specifically the Doctor Strange episode, we'll probably bring it up at some point, because we're probably going to be covering Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we'll talk about that more whenever that comes out. I'm very excited. Uh, Sam Raimi, I hope it's good. Moving on. All right, so moving on, uh, we have a pretty big delay. So John Wick 4 got delayed by a, a whole year. It is now coming out spring 2023 as opposed to, yep. I think... Yeah, what, wasn't what? it? I think it was May 2022 and it was delayed to M- March 2023, yep. I want to say. It, 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 might, got, it got delayed because of the, uh, the new variant, which keeps popping up. It's going to keep happening at this point, probably. <laughs> The, the movie yep, delays so expect yeah, more this, movie delays this is unfortunately something that hollywood is gonna have to work with and hopefully not collapse under but we'll see is could the, like pe- people are saying like oh it's the death of of cinema i, I, like, no. I wouldn't say it's the death of cinema but it's definitely something they need to work with like like yeah like streaming services are getting the the upper hand right now but did you see what happened with scarlett johansson you don't want that happening in your company, right? <laughs> Please release your movie in theaters. <laughs> I personally, I just think there's there's no better viewing experience than in theaters, but that's a personal thing. Yeah, so uh, we mentioned this all I, 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 like in one of the first couple episodes when when we were like Venom, let there be carnage, got delayed or something like that, uh, when, or when we were talking about the whole Black Widow thing. But guys, if you really, really want to watch a movie and you're really excited about the movie, if you can, please watch it in theaters. Get the proper viewing experience and support the artists. So yeah, they can ma- make it's mainly to support cool. the audi- artists and the creators because some, some of them don't, like, like what happened with Scarlett Johansson, the contract didn't include the sales from Disney+, Plus, which was yeah, a big know, like, thing. Yeah, and, they, and she made a big enough stink, and she was a big enough name where she was able to, to win that war, but that doesn't necessarily happen for everybody. So you should support the industry where you can. Yeah. But uh, with that, we move on to the... We probably should have mentioned this first, because it has to do with the other Marvel stuff. Oh, I, I missed it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but at the time, I, I mean, I, I probably should have ordered this better. But yeah, at the time of recording, uh, Hawkeye ended uh, today. We yeah. have not watched it. We're watching the finale after recording this, probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to have... We'll have opinions on Hawkeye next week, maybe. Uh, we are going to do... We are going to dedicate an entire episode to Hawkeye. Uh, Although it's a little... Our our planned coverage for these Marvel shows has slowed down a little bit, but we will get there eventually. Yeah, we will get there eventually, so bear with us. It gives you more, uh, more time to watch the other episodes of the podcast. We have... Michael Keaton was cast as um, Batman in the upcoming Batwoman, a uh, Batgirl movie. Michael Keaton's going places these days. Good for uh, him. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm happy because I love Keaton's Batman. Uh, Batman, Batman '89 is one of my favorite movies ever made. I love him in the character. I love him in Birdman, one of my favorite movies ever made. <laughs> I love him as Vulture, and I'm sure I love him <laughs> in The Flash wait, and in Batgirl. Wait, uh, wait. I just, he plays the same character in No Way in, in Far From Home. I mean in Homecoming and Birdman. <laughs> yep. He plays And and in Birdman, Birdman he, if you will. And in Birdman he plays himself. <laughs> a, a, a washed up actor from a superhero movie. 
trying to come back into Indian history, which was what happened. <laughs> so it's funny how that works sometimes. Funny. Uh, Birdman is fantastic. Maybe I'll recommend it to Lib one day. Lastly, I don't think Pat's ever seen the Harry Potter films. I have not. I have seen them. And the cast of Harry Potter is doing a reunion special. It will be premiering on HBO Max on January 1st to celebrate the uh, 20th anniversary of uh, Harry Potter. Uh, J.K. Rowling is not invited. Yeah, she was not invited. <laughs> Which is hilarious. <laughs> I think that that's it for yep. Hot Off the Presses. Yep. We got, we got one more segment. All right, so... Uh, we're gonna move on to backlogged. Yeah, th- this this week's backlogged was interesting because you okay, so how we usually do it is I recommend a little movie and then he'll recommend me a movie, right? And we never specifically stated this rule, but it was kind of implied that I'm gonna recommend him a movie I've seen. Yeah, and <laughs> then I, I, I recommend him one that I've seen that he hasn't. Yeah, yeah, that that was always the implication, right? Yeah. Well, this week we did something a little differently. Yeah, he... uh, I recommended a little movie. I haven't seen. We both haven't seen. And I really wanted him to I really wanted him to watch this and I really wanted an excuse to watch it. I can't so, believe uh, I can't believe we needed an excuse to watch this. Yeah. Yeah, cuz honestly like I should have watched this a long fucking time ago. Enough dancing around it. Uh, we watched uh, Whiplash. Yep, we wa- we finally watched Whiplash, a 2014 movie directed by Damien Chazelle, the same genius who directed La La Land. If you want a little reminder about how we feel about La La Land, because we did talk about La La Land earlier in the podcast. Yeah, in episode in two. I love La La Land. Me too. It's one um, of my favorite movies ever made. This is also up there. <laughs> this is also up there for me. Uh, I watched it for the first time. It is in my top five favorite movies of all time. Okay, I'm just, gonna, I'm just, I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna read the synopsis here. Okay, so Whiplash: The Road to Greatness Can Take You to the Edge. Under the direction of a ruthless instructor, J.K. Simmons, a talented young drummer, Miles Tenor, begins to pursue perfection at any cost, even his humanity. And I and I that's a pretty accurate this description. This is a it's a really accurate description. The it, the short version of that of this movie is basically just like let's see how far we can push a a perfectionist until they break. Yeah. <laughs> J.K. Simmons plays a really convincing abusive uh music teacher to my miles teller who i've never heard of until this movie but pat might have seen him because apparently he's in fan four stick yep he's he's uh he's mr fantastic in fan four stick yeah yeah he's reed richards yeah. yep that's cool he's also in divergent never seen divergent yeah but... he's um he's the main character in divergent i believe i think he's also in ender's game but don't quote me He's an Ender. Hold on, I've seen Ender's Game. Don't, I fucking love Ender's me. Game. He's not an Ender's Game. I, I think he's an Ender Game. Ender's Game. Don't quote me. There's no way he's not an Ender's Game. He's not an Ender's Game. Okay, well, I, I mixed up white people. I'm sorry. Harrison Ford. Uh, anyways, yeah, I, I, yeah, I love Ender's Game. <laughs> uh, but, I like the book. I, I read the book. I haven't seen the movie. Oh wow, mm-hmm. That's, uh, it's it's like your Dune. It's another sci-fi. <laughs> Except I don't like the book all that much, so I probably <laughs> won't like it. The book is very niche. Yeah. Uh, but back to Whiplash. So this, I don't, I don't know what to, I don't know how to talk about it. I'm not a, I'm not a music person, and I have no personal relationship with anybody who is either a music person or a a perfectionist to this degree. But watching this film was a struggle. Like you, you feel every bit of anxiety and every bit of pain that these characters are going through, and they want you to feel it. They want you to feel like shit, just like the characters in the universe feel like shit. Like, just just to just to tell you how good this movie is, because mo- a lot of ratings on Letterboxd are like you know they're they're pretty even, but this like there there's still ratings that are less than two stars, but. Because it's cut up in percentages, zero percent half stars, zero percent one stars, zero percent one and a half, one percent two stars. Yeah, people people love this movie, and 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 there's a lot to love. Like I gave it five, I gave it five stars. Like I, I also gave it five stars, and I gave it a like as well. 
Yeah, um, it, it's a fantastic movie. It's one I'm gonna recommend everybody ever to see. But I feel like I watched it under the right. Like I watched it with Lib and uh, and some other friends uh, for the first time. And um, I think if I was watching this alone, I would have felt like shit right after. You know. Yeah. When I wa- when I watched this after watching this movie, I like my heart was racing the whole movie. And once it was over, because it, it ends with this amazing drum solo from uh, Miles Teller. I don't know if it's actually him playing the drums, uh, the actor. I, d- I don't know. I'll have to look that up because shit. This, like, th- there's th- so much emotion in this movie that, that they make you feel. Like, it's, it's such a, a heavy movie to watch. It's like, I can't explain. Like, the, 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 there's no way to explain it. Like, I know, I know it, it, it sucks to hear a, re- a movie review podcasts say this but you have to watch it for yourself to understand it like, i i can't write i can't recommend this enough especially if you're someone who is in a similar like circumstance and because people like this exist both the the student and the teacher yes. are people who who are real who you might know and i think there's something everybody can get from watching this whether you, you care about music at all or you could not give less of a shit i think there's something to enjoy here I want to do a full episode on this, but I don't know if I can. Just because I don't know what I I don't know what I like. I guess there's stuff to say, but like it's it's, it's hard. It's hard, it's hard to, to talk. T- it's it. hard to talk about it because there's there's only like a, a handful of movies that I've ever seen that have a- actually left me speechless. Where I, I can't even talk about the movie. Where I just have to tell someone you have to watch it. Whiplash is one of them now. Whiplash is definitely one of them. Because there, there's just certain movies you just can't talk about, you know? That you just have to tell just... someone to watch it. For me, 1917 is also one of those movies. You can't just talk about it. You, you have to show it to somebody. Yeah, well, I mean, this is something I've been to recommend over and over again for the rest of time. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I, I absolutely loved it. I'm, I'm happy we, we finally found that drive to, to, to watch this because it's fantastic. Maybe you'll hear us talk more about it if we do find a way to talk about it. But really, you'll have to watch it. It's on Amazon Prime Video uh, if you want to watch it through a streaming service. Honestly, if you could buy the DVD for this, do it. <laughs> like, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's a shame that I'll never be able to see this for the first time in theaters ever again. Either. Like, ever, ever. Not even, not even ever again, just ever. It, it's, it'll never be... It's never gonna, it, they're never going to rerun this movie. But even even if they did, I'm I've already seen it. Yeah, but anyways, with that, I know that was a super short segment, but again, speechless, like actually speechless, masterpiece of a film. But uh, every and now it's Lib's, Lib's turn. Yeah, so it's time to take a stop. Me a masterpiece. Yeah, time to take not. a stop to recommendation station. Now I Pat, for the, this is another podcast. First, I'm gonna give you a choice here. Okay. No choice oh. between two movies, but because there's also another movie that we both have not seen that's in both of our watch lists that I can recommend, or I have one that I've been meaning to recommend to you for a while that I have already seen. So which one do you want? A movie that's in. I think well, let's do the one that's in both our watch lists, just so we have like one one, right? Yeah, that'd be cute. Okay, sure. So this is another movie that a lot of people say is one of the best movies ever made. I remember, uh, so, uh, Stefano actually watched this. Stefano is, uh, the, the, the person who runs the, the Jazz Walkers Network. Stefano's seen this movie. I don't remember his opinions on it, but he said it was pretty good. Not, he said it wasn't as, as good as he thought it would be, but it is pretty good. So, Pat, uh, what's your favorite sport? <laughs> My favorite sport? What's your favorite sport, Pat? I like sport ball. You like sport ball? You, you ever been? You ever been to? You ever been to a bowling alley? I, I have. Yes. You, been to, you like bowling? I I enjoy bowling. Yes. Well, I I I have a I have a movie about a few guys who really like bowling, like really like like John Goodman, like Jeff Bridges, like Steve Buscemi. What movie is this? I don't know. 
It's this on my is, watch list. I have to know what it is. This is The Big Lebowski. Oh, wait, no, I've seen The Big Lebowski. You've seen it? I've seen it. Why is that on my watch list? I've it, seen The Big Lebowski. It's in your watch list. Oh, fuck, the, the bit is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Damn it! The big we, the Damn enti- it. For our entire time of making this podcast, we were always scared that something like this would happen. Yeah, this was gonna happen eventually. No, I, it's not in my watch list. I haven't. I haven't said as watched. It's not in my watch list. I saw it in your watch list like a day are ago. You, are Are you sure? Yes, <laughs> I remember it's... flipping through it. I also own this movie physically, so I don't know if. if... Okay, well. All right, well, then I guess I'm going to recommend you the other movie. Yeah, I recommend the other movie. You got to keep this in because it's funny. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this was a fear we were having for a long time. And yeah, it finally is... happened. It finally happened. God damn it. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. Okay, anyway, what's what's the movie? Yeah, I'll probably watch The Big Lebowski anyways. I still haven't watch seen it. Watch it anyway because it's, it's really good. You know, you know what? I, if, you, if you don't watch it before the next episode recording, I'll recommend it to you. Okay, no, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> okay. Well, now I have really to. Good. Now I, I have, have to because I made the mistake. Fantastic movie. Uh, I love The Big Lebowski. Yeah, let's make that a yeah. rule. Let's make that a rule. If any of us makes that mistake again, you have to watch the movie. You have to watch it. You have yeah. to watch it. Yeah, okay, sure. All right. So, the other movie. Now, I know, I know you haven't seen this, and I've been making fun of you for a long time for not seeing this. The Pact. <laughs> I always do these You're stupid really bits. So, it'd, be really, it'd be really awkward if I'm like, oh, I watched this like today. Hello. You piece of shit. I bet. Yeah, so, anyway, anyway, go on. So, Pat, what's your, what's your favorite Brad Pitt movie? <laughs> oh, I don't have one. You don't have? It's not seven? It's, I, mean, I guess I might. Yeah, it'll probably be seven. <laughs> yeah. Let me look at Brad Pitt movies while, while you continue your bit. Well, don't look up any Brad Pitt movies and you'll see it. Okay, so... I'm not looking up any Brad Pitt movies, but it's, it, but it's it, I just remember he's in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So yeah, maybe, so maybe there. You know, you know who else is is pretty cool. You know, who else is pretty cool. George Clooney. He's in Fantastic Mr. Fox. You know George Clooney. Yeah, George Clooney's pretty. He's Batman. Yeah, he's Batman. It's, we got George Clooney, Brad Pitt. You know, you know who else you have. One of my least favorite actors, yeah. Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. But. Uh, you know that, that's that's a that's already three strong casting, right? How about Andy Garcia? How about oh. Julia Roberts? How about Bernie Mac? How about Elliot Gould? All star casting. You ever been to a casino? <laughs> Casinos are pretty cool, aren't they? You recommend me casino because I have bad news for you. If you are, it's not casino, but it is. <laughs> it is Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Okay, I have not seen Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, you're right. From I think from the start of this podcast, I've been like, "Hey Pat, you seen Ocean's Eleven? He's like, "No." He mentioned this like the other day, like till you asked me this the other day if I if I had seen Ocean's Eleven yet. I said no. It is in my watch list. It is in my watch list. So yeah, uh, I'm ready. There you go. You got Ocean's Eleven. You also have to watch Ocean's Twelve and Thirteen. I'm kidding. <laughs> we'll see. We, we will see. Uh, I'm kidding. So, Ocean's Eleven is my favorite heist movie. I I'm I'm really into heist movies. So it's a story about this all-star fucking cast. Like, this might be the best casting ever for anything. Trying to rob three casinos. I still think it'd be really funny if you recommended me Casino. I know you've seen Casino. <laughs> Not only have I seen it, but it's in my top 50, I think. I, I know you've seen uh, Better than Ocean's Eleven? I guess we'll find out next week. Uh, I mean, I give it a four, but we'll see. I love Ocean's Eleven, so can't wait for you to watch it, Pat. And and I also have to watch the Big Lebowski now. It's the rules. Ooh, that's a bit. That was kind of embarrassing. It had to happen eventually. You know what? I'm happy yeah. it happened with something like the Big Lebowski, and not you recommending me like Cats. And you were okay, but I, I know I know you've seen Cats. No, but like something of that tier, you know. So I mean, at least it happened with something you haven't seen and is amazing because the Big Lebowski is amazing and you haven't seen it. So. Yeah, yeah. But with that being said, that about wraps it up for today's uh, episode so yeah thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the podcast make sure to check out all of our other episodes and our socials which you can find on the link tree at linktr.ee slash fresh underscore off underscore the underscore real no capitals no spaces that's why there's underscores and there you can find a form that you can fill out to recommend us a film or TV show to watch and then review for the podcast. 
You'll also find our social medias and our letterbox account so you can keep up with move which what with what movies we're watching and you know maybe get a spoiler for an episode. <laughs> I, I don't know if we we mentioned this last week or not. Actually, I, I think we had this discussion after the episode. But um, we probably won't be doing what, what we watched episodes anymore. So if you're really curious about what, we, what we've been watching at our personal time, well, follow us on Letterboxd. If anything, the only time we're ever going to do it again is is if we have nothing else to review. <laughs> or, like, or like year in reviews type shit. But for, until next year, I think we're set. Yeah, we're, we're pretty set. We, we have a nice long list. And that list can get even longer with your recommendations. So come on, guys. Don't be afraid to drop them in. And with that being said, next week, get ready for some spooter. And we'll see you. Our warning might be a long one. It's probably it's going to be definitely reaching towards two hours. <laughs> so we're going to see you then and in a theater near you. Good night, everybody. Good night.